Evidence gathering from a recent combined University of Auckland and University of Canterbury archaeological trip to the sub-Antarctic island of Enderby could not only confirm a Māori arrival date but any extended and later occupations. A team of 12 spent 11 days on Enderby in April looking for further evidence of early human interactions with the landscape. Professor Simon Holdaway from the University of Auckland and Dr Matsu Prebble, Nō Ngaitahu from the University of Canterbury are with us now. Tēnā kōrua, thank you both for joining us. Tēnā te mihi ki koe, Neil. Thanks now, for having us. Let's begin with you, Professor Holdaway. Where can we find Enderby and why was this island chosen for your research? So Enderby is about um, 460 kilometres or so uh, south of Rakeura, literally uh, directly south from the uh, Aotearoa mainland. And I guess we were interested in the project, uh, Matu and I, to look at uh, islands from the very north of New Zealand all the way down to the very south to really un understand Māori engagement with the environment and the, the contrasts uh, that we see on that north-south uh, uh, incline. Mm. Dr Preppel, how helpful was this trip in answering questions about Māori voyaging and, and life on the island? Uh, well, as Simon and I know from the actual trip that we took, we shared a cabin on the, the waka down to the island. We, we travelled by boat down there. Uh, the seas are really inhospitable. We, had, we were in 10 metre swells and we got to know each other quite well on that particular trip. Uh, so it's the feat of actually getting to the island in the first place. Uh, but also just about the, the dynamism of that particular environment and just how uh, complex the archaeological and, and dynamic the archaeological settings that we were working on were there. Um, quite incredible. For me, mm. personally, being there for the first time, uh, but also for our, our kaitiaki ropu and morihiki, we, we had kaitiaki reps from uh, Roku Runanga there, mm -hmm. as well as other Naitahu archaeologists. For us, it's just a, a very, very special occasion. We've got some great shots of the island there. Professor Holdaway, what's life on the island like now, considering global warming and the impact this has had on the planet? Yeah, the, the um, islands today are uh, indeed a World Heritage Area and a marine heritage reserve. So I guess it's Matu and I were when in an island where it is really the animals first and humans second. And that, that was a different experience. You, you've got a, I guess one might describe a naive fauna, naive in the sense that uh, they're not used to a lot of human interaction. And indeed we uh, were quite careful to limit our interaction with mm. animal species. Fantastic to observe or the range of, of birds and indeed the, the big sea lions, penguins, um, albatross, uh, that sort of thing. But uh, people are a, a, a kind of a secondary consideration. The animals go first, we go second. Um, so indeed, we, we stop work quite often um, if the, um, all the animals got a little bit close to, to where we were working. We kind of backed off and let them go first. Okay. Um, so that's a different because it's not yeah. what we normally, how we normally interact. Is, is it, uh, Dr. Preble, is anyone living on the island currently? Or, and what did you discover about how Māori would have survived on the island? Oh, kia ora. Uh, so currently, yeah, as I say, it's, it's, uh, as Simon says, it's a World Heritage Area, so there are no one, there's no one presently living on the island. Uh, this is on Enderby, and there's only a dock hut on the island, which okay. is only occupied uh, mainly by teams, uh, research teams and dock uh, rangers who come down to monitor for pest control and for the sea lion monitoring and uh, uh, the uh, hoi ho yellow-eyed penguin monitoring. Um, but, but for us, the, the archaeology at the moment is really, from what we've, we've taken and from this particular trip is just the extent of the living areas that we, we didn't quite anticipate from the previous research that's been conducted there. So we have these huge umu hangi that mm. are there that are just metres thick and, uh, and filled with a lot of charcoal and uh, umu uh, hangi stones, uh, but also a lot of uh, uh, material of bones and shell and other remains, uh, which uh, Simon can talk to more mm. on, on the stone tools that we were identifying there. They're some of the most significant things there. 
Yeah, it's absolutely incredible, even, even seeing some of the footage. Professor Holloway, what evidence have you found of transport or travel between mainland Aotearoa and Enderby? So that's a really good question. And I guess um, we can look for material evidence. For instance, as Madhu said, there's uh, work stone. And, you know, we absolutely expect to see work stone uh, in the uh, Auckland Island sites as we do on mainland Aotearoa. But one of the key, uh, I guess, areas to consider is the, is the geology of, of that stone. And indeed, are there uh, pieces that are uh, absolutely coming from the mainland south? There's quite a lot of basalt and some chert uh, flax. Uh, and both those materials are available on the Auckland Islands. But we've got uh, some evidence that may, and I'm underline may because we haven't done the analysis yet oh. indicate for instance um, uh, material traveling in from the north island there's a couple of very small uh, flakes that indeed matu and i were looking at last week that might be obsidian and if it indeed is obsidian that would indicate uh, uh, movement yeah. from those sources and they are only found in the north island today all right it's, it's the Pribble. dragon dragon glass of uh, dragon glass of Tao Māori, as they call it, the obsidian. It's it's absolutely fantastic. If that if that came off, it would be, again, uh, really emphasising the evidence that supports uh, that that all of the exploration of all of the motu of the islands of Aotearoa were explored at a similar time, mm. and they're exchanging uh, res and bringing the same resources right across the motu. Um, so we're, we're very hopeful that that's the case. And you've used Vibracore, right, uh, to to recover. Um, sediment under the sand. How is this used to research Māori occupation? Uh, so the the I, I much of my work has revolved around exploring environmental archives, and usually that's conducted on places like our roto, our lakes, and on swamps, repo. Uh, but on the the back of the sand dunes of Enderby are these huge peat banks. Uh, so lots of organic material that's accumulated over the last few thousand years. And within those peats, we can actually identify traces of what people were doing on that landscape, but also how the different uh, animals in that environment were reacting to what people were doing in the landscape too. So we can, for example, we know, of course, that there were these huge hangi umu mm. right across the sand dunes there. Can we detect just how extensive these particular uh, fireplaces were? How are they collecting the wood resources? Because remembering it's very cold down on that island. It's very, very wet too. How would people maintain their fires continually for, for the periods that they were living down on the island? And we can imagine that some, uh, some of the Māori uh, might have um, not been too happy about leaving some beautiful hot climates for this type of weather. But it, 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 absolutely extraordinary. Really appreciate you joining us today. We don't have any idea on when Māori might have been there yet? Yes, we do. Uh, we have very robust uh, ages, which again shows we have radiocarbon dates from charcoal material, which does show that the island was occupied at about the same time the rest of Aotearoa was initially settled. Okay. So with 14th, 13th and 14th century. So again, it's just that people were travelling on their wakahodua all the way down to Mokahuka, the Auckland Islands, uh, and it, it's, it's, again, it's a remarkable feat Absolutely. Of, of our tupuna. Yeah, appreciate that, Dr Matu Preble from the University of Canterbury and Professor Simon Holdaway from the University of Auckland. Thank you both so much for joining us today and sharing some of your findings around Māori travels to the Antarctic. Ngā mihi kia kōrua. Ngā mihi kia koe.